I am speaking up to issue a warning informed by lessons of history too often forgotten. No matter what our beliefs, no matter where we stand on the war in Gaza, all of us must condemn anti-Semitism with full-throated clarity wherever we see it before it metastasizes into something even worse. Because right now, that's what Jewish Americans fear most. That was Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, the first Jewish leader of either chamber of Congress and the highest ranking Jewish elected official in American history, denouncing the surge in anti-Semitism today. He devoted his roughly 45-minute speech to explaining how Jewish people have felt isolated in the last month, calling out recent examples of anti-Semitism in the U.S., and speaking about the, how the trauma of Jewish people that they've experienced for millennia is affecting how they feel now. His views are partially echoed by Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum, leader of congregation Beit Simhat Torah in New York City, the world's largest LGBTQ plus synagogue. Rabbi Kleinbaum and her wife, Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, recently returned from a Shiva trip to Israel, where they grieved the October 7 attacks and met with members of the Israeli community, as well as Jewish Arab collaborative groups to discuss the importance of a peaceful shared society. From Israel, Rabbi Kleinbaum wrote, to envision this conflict in simple and binary terms is to remain willfully indifferent while the blood of our fellow human beings neighbors to one another, is spilled before our eyes. We must reject the binary. To support Israeli Jews does not mean we cannot support Palestinians. To support Palestinians does not mean we cannot support Israeli Jews. Joining me now are Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum and Randy Weingarten. Thank you both very much. I read the piece in Haaretz uh, featuring your trip and immediately started bugging my producers to please, please, please track these wonderful ladies down. I want to start with you, Rabbi Kleinbaum. Uh, tell, tell us what prompted you to make this trip uh, and what did you learn? What did you see? Well, thank you so much for having us on tonight. Uh, well, we really wanted to go for a couple of reasons. One is, as you described, it's traditional for Jews to pay a shiva visit, to visit somebody who is grieving in mourning and to be physically present with them. And we felt that we wanted to be there for Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs and to be uh, really a witness to what's going on there and to be able to hug people and say, we are so sorry about the pain that is ex being experienced now. Uh, so that was the first thing, is to really be present with people who are suffering. And that is what I believe God demands of us, is to be in the presence of suffering, to not close our eyes or our hearts, and to be able to be open with compassion and with love to all those who are in pain right now. And Randy Weingarten, we, uh, we, we are so familiar with you being in the struggle on this uh, side of the world over things like books and history. And that includes Holocaust yeah. history, which also has faced literal bans uh, of those books in this country. And I just want to know what your sort of feelings were, emotions were now being in Israel. And um, I, I understand you all met with families of people um, who had hostages that were still missing. So... First off, Joy, thank you for having us on. And I think we feel quite shattered um, for a lot of different reasons. Both Sharon and I have spent, you know, our adult lives fighting for equality for Palestinians, fighting for um, a shared society, fighting for an Israel that was, you know, was said in the Declaration of Human, uh, the Declaration of Israel's Independence in 1948 for wanting to have that kind of shared society, fighting against the occupation, fighting against what's happening on the West Bank. And so October 7th changed a lot of things there. And there is a shattering that we both feel. And, you know, there is an empathy that seems lost both in our country and in Israel. And when you are there and talking to Israeli Arabs as well as Israeli Jews, you see a sense of wanting a future and, and, and fighting for that future. And I think that's what President Biden is doing. And I think that part of our trip was not only to hug and to bear witness, but to be able to be there to help 
um, form that future again and that hope again. But it's pretty shattering yeah. to hear the stories. Um, Rabbi Kleinbaum, you know, Chuck Schumer today he gave a very moving, emotional speech. He spent 45 minutes going through, you know, talking about the reasons why um, Jewish folks feel so shattered in this moment. And one of the lines that stood out to me is he talked about the trauma, the historical trauma that informs the way that Jewish people feel about Israel, the way they feel in this moment after uh, October 7. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because I think that people do forget that a lot of the ways that people react to circumstances are based on trauma. Well, and I think these events that are unfolding now uh, actually are triggering trauma for both Israeli Jews and for Palestinians. Indeed. For us as Jews, there is almost no country in the history of the world and of our people from which we were not either expelled or murdered or otherwise victimized. And it is in our DNA to know that the transformation from being an accepted part of society to being uh, a victim it can be it can turn on a dime. And then to see this greatest act of violence against Jews since the Holocaust absolutely triggers and brings up such deep, such deep fears. And it's an actual it was an actual event of terrible, atrocious. Uh, victim, vict uh, victimization. But I think it's also true for Palestinians. Palestinians see, see you know, thousands of Palestinians being sent on uh, marches to leave the north of the Gaza Strip to go to the south. And for them, it's a reenactment in many ways of a Nakba memory. And what we were doing there and what I have been doing over and over again for all of my years of activism and of concern and of my deepest part of my religious life is that these are two peoples who are not going anywhere. This is not a sports game where we choose sides. These are two peoples who deserve to have a future. Nobody's going anywhere. There are millions of Jews, millions of Palestinians, and we must find a way for there to be a shared future in this land for both peoples. It will not be solved by a military solution. It will only be solved by a diplomatic, human-to-human -human solution. And we need governments to start talking that way. And exactly as Randy said, what happened on the West Bank today is horrific, absolutely horrific. And it represents, up until yeah. October 6th, the Israeli population had the largest demonstrations for 10 months, the equivalent of 15 million Americans yeah. in the street every Saturday night protesting an extremist, racist government. Yeah. And some of those people are continuing to do exactly that on the West Bank. But we stand with those Israeli Jews and the many, many who yeah. yeah. stand for this shared future. I, I would be always uh, remiss to ever interrupt a rabbi uh, when, when, <laughs> when, when Sister is preaching, but I have to because I have Sorry to go to commercial that. break. Uh, I, you ladies are wonderful. You can come give me a hug anytime because I love hugs. Okay. So please, please come when, near, when you guys are near D.C. Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum and Randy Weingarten, you both are wonderful. Thank you.